Heavenly Father, we are grateful this morning that we are standing in your mercy, that we are standing in your grace. Thank you this morning that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and mercy to receive the grace and the help that we need for such a time as this. Thank you for the grace that delivers, the grace that saves. Thank you for the blood of the everlasting covenant, the blood that is always able to wash us, the blood that purifies, the blood that cleanses, the blood that sanctifies, the blood that consecrates, the blood that is able to purge our hearts and our minds, the blood that is able to purge our conscience from dead works that bring death. Thank you for the blood that has changed sinners into saints. Thank you for the blood that has caused us to become the elect of God. Thank you for the blood that transferred us from being slaves to being the sons and daughters of the mighty God. Thank you for the blood that separates us from evil bloodlines. Thank you for the blood that has given us a new beginning. Thank you for the blood that has changed our story. Thank you for the blood that has done a new work in us. We are grateful this morning that we are redeemed. We are restored. We, we are cleansed. We are washed. We are purified. We are perfected by reason of the blood of our Savior, Jesus. Savior, we thank you. The ones you died for have gathered to worship you. Savior, the ones you were nailed to the cross for have gathered to worship you. Thank you, Savior. Lord, because of us, you allowed them to beat you up. The ones that you were beaten up for have gathered to say thank you because of the stripes on your back. We are standing as the healed of the Lord this morning. Thank you because you were beaten up beyond recognition. Today we are healed. We can receive divine healing. We can be restored. Thank you, Jesus. Your face was beaten beyond recognition so that our faces might carry the glory of God. Thank you this morning that your glory is upon us by reason of the sufferings that you suffered on the cross. We are grateful this morning. Jesus, thank you that you descended into the pit. You descended into the grave. You went into the grave, into the depths of hell and Hades, so that we today could have authority over the kingdom of darkness. Thank you, Jesus, that you went into the grave and you bound oh Lord, the, the, the spirit of death and you bound the spirit of hell. You arrested death and hell and you took the keys from them and you ascended up and you led captivity captive and you gave gifts unto men so that today we could be recipients of the keys of the kingdom. Thank you that today with the key that you have given us, the key of your great name, we are able to bind and loose and whatever we bind remain bound, whatever we loose remains loosed. It is all because of you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for what you've done for us. We are very grateful this morning. We are grateful this morning. You, O oh King, have done it again. You have done it again. And we are grateful. We are grateful. We honor you. We bless your name. We bow down and worship you. For God, you deserve it. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. Oh, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Who are we as sons of men that you even have time for us, O oh God, and you have made us a little lower than Elohim and crowned us, O oh God, with your goodness and your power and your strength and your majesty. We are grateful this morning. Take all the glory, Adonai. Take all the adoration. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, brethren. You are welcome again this morning. We just want to bless God with First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter 29. First Chronicles 29. If you have your Bible with you, please open to verse 10. First Chronicles 29, verse 10. We just want to proclaim this scripture. And you know, the Bible tells us that the word of God is living and powerful. 
It is sharper than any two-edged sword as we proclaim the word of God. Angels hearken to the word. They take the word and the word becomes their assignment as we read the word of God out loudly and we proclaim it. We become the heralds of the great king. And if you are a herald of the great king, it's obvious that the power of the king is behind you. Every time you pronounce the word, you proclaim the word, the power of heaven backs up the that word and the glory of God arises on us and the environments and the territories where we are in. Let's take first Chronicles 29 from verse 10. We will take it from verse 10 to verse 13. If you are there with me, let's read it out loud. First Chronicles 29 from verse 10. And we are going to, you're going to put your name there instead of saying, therefore, David, bless the Lord. You're going to say, therefore, I bless the Lord this morning in the congregation of this 7 a.m. Sorry, 6 a.m. assembly. I bless the Lord. I am blessing the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and bless him. Father God is we gather this morning. We bless you, Yahweh. We bless you, Lord, in the sight of all this assembly. Blessed, praised, adored, and thanked are you, O Lord God of Israel, God of our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and on the earth, yours is the dominion and kingdom, O Lord, and you exalt yourself as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all. In your hand is power and might. And it is in your hands to make great and to give strength to everyone. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Father. Honor to your name, Father. Oh, be exalted in this place. Be exalted, be exalted. Be exalted, be exalted, be lifted on high. Yours, O oh Father, is the greatness. Yours, O oh God, is the glory. Yours is the power and the strength. May your glory be made manifest here, Father. Be lifted in this place, O oh God, above every other God, above every idol. Be lifted, O oh God. Be lifted in this house. Be exalted. Be magnified, O oh God. We extol your name. We reverence your name. We magnify your name this morning in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, as we come to you, we acknowledge that without you, we are nothing. There is nothing we have, O oh God, that is good, that has not come from you. We acknowledge without your mercy, without your grace, we cannot make it. And so, Lord, we need you today more than yesterday. We lay down every crown, whatever we think is an achievement, whatever we think is status, whatever we think is honor. We lay it at the feet of the master Jesus and we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that you would lift us up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we renounce pride. We renounce self-sufficiency. Anything we think we can do for ourselves, we repent of it. We renounce it and we say, Lord, we need you. Lord, we can't do it without you. Lord, we are helpless without you. We lay our crowns uh, and we worship you. We surrender all. Uh, Father God, we surrender anything in us that says I will do it myself. Uh, that says I'm going to make it. Uh, if I just work harder, uh, if I just work harder, uh, Lord, we surrender that. Uh, we lay down at your feet uh, and say, Lord, uh, we need you. We are totally and, and hundred percent uh, reliant on your grace, your power. Nothing that we have, oh God, uh, that will help us uh, in this season. Uh, we need your help. We need your strength. We need your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We need you. We need you, Lord. We need you. Lord, forgive us. Is there anything we have tried to do on our own? Lord, we repent of it and we surrender all to you. We withhold nothing. Is there anything we have tried to solve on our own, with our own mindset, with our own reasoning, with our own wisdom? We repent of it and we surrender all to you. We refuse to be the people who try to solve their own problems. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we surrender. We surrender to you, ancient of days, for you, O God, are the founder 
fountain of wisdom. You are the wisdom of the wise. You are the strength of the strong. Lord, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. We will trust in the name of the Lord our God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, as we continue with our prayers, I just want us to pray once again and ask God for mercy, you know, for ourselves and our families and our bloodlines. Is there anything in these families where we are represented or in our bloodlines that would give the kingdom of darkness permission to be able to come against us? Or that would cause God to be unable to stop the hand of the enemy. In the book of Obadiah, Obadiah, um, in, 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 in the first chapter, we see that Edom, Esau, they were arrogant. There were those people who, uh, I would do it myself. Esau was an, I would do it myself kind of guy. When it was time to get married, he married the ones whom God said don't marry and he built his own wealth. In fact, long before there were kings in the tribe of um, Israel, in the tribe of Jacob, there were already dukes and kings in Esau. Esau was a self-made man and because he was a self-made man, he was consistently walking against the counsel of God. And this is what God said to Esau, Obadiah verse 4. From verse 4, it says, though you build your nest on high like the eagle, I'm reading Amplified, though you build your nest on high like the eagle, though you set your nest among the stars, I will bring you down from there, says the Lord. If thieves came to you, if robbers by night, how you will be ruined. Would they not steal only until they had enough? If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave some grapes for gleaning? How Esau Edom shall be ransacked by men who come to ravage with divine approval. Esau was going to be ransacked by enemies who came with divine approval. How his hidden treasures shall be, shall be searched out. The common denominator here is that they had divine approval. God didn't try to stop the enemies of Esau uh, because Esau had become a self-made man. He, he had done all these things outside the counsel and the purposes of God. I want us to pray for ourselves and the bloodlines we represent from our father's side, our mother's side. If you're married, your spouse's father's side, their mother's side, wherever we have sinned against God in our bloodlines, wherever we have been doing it ourselves and God has allowed the devourer to devour and allowed the robbers to steal, allowed the thieves to steal and say they have divine approval. Let's ask God for mercy and ask that the blood of Jesus would revoke every counsel of destruction. The blood of Jesus would revoke any counsel that would bring destruction. Let the mercy of God, let the mercy of God triumph over judgment. Father, in the name of Jesus, any way that we and our bloodlines, oh God, have become like Esau, had a self-made destiny where we thought we would do it ourselves. And now the powers of darkness have divine approval to ransack, to steal, to destroy. Lord, we pray for mercy. Every approval to steal, to kill and destroy. Lord, we are praying for mercy. Let that approval be overturned in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, deliver us. Deliver me and my bloodlines from my father's side my mother's side, my spouse's father's side, his mother's side, wherever, oh God, we have been involved in wickedness in our bloodlines. And Lord, the door had been opened up with divine approval for the enemy to steal, to kill and destroy. We are asking for mercy this morning. Let mercy triumph over judgment. Any door that has been left open in the realm of the spirit for the enemy to be able to enter through. Father, we repent for the reason of that door and we plead the blood of Jesus upon that door. Let every door be sealed by the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Uh, any door that Satan and his agents would use against us, oh God, we are praying. Let those doors be sealed this morning. Let them be sealed, oh God. Any door that would bring ill health, uh, any door that would bring shame, that would bring disgrace, uh, any door that would bring poverty, that would bring failure, that would bring embarrassment, uh, that would bring stagnation and retrogression, uh, 
We repent for that door, oh God, and we plead the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus seal those open doors, seal those cracks, any way that the enemy and his agents had room to enter. Lord, we pray for mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we are in your hands. We surrender ourselves into your hands. We refuse the, the man-made refugees, oh God. We refuse the man-made nest. Lord, we ask you build the refuge for us. We hide ourselves in you, in the cleft of the rock. We hide ourselves in Jesus. We hide ourselves in your presence. You are our defense and our protection. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are the defense of our family. You are the defense defense of our bloodlines. You are the defense of our household. You are the defense of everything that concerns us in the mighty name of Jesus. We hide ourselves in you, O God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to revoke the things that are in Obadiah by the mercy of God and the blood of Jesus. That Lord, any power that is trying to bring us down, any thief, any robber, that is trying to ruin us spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, in every dimension. Lord, let every such robber be arrested right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Anything that is trying to bring us down from up there, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let every such power be arrested and bound in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that is seeking to bring us down, anything that is seeking to rob us of the possessions we have, of the privileges we have, of the blessings we have, of the honor we have, of the of the of the grace we have, of the the, the the positions we have. Lord, in the name of Jesus, arrest them this morning. Let them be bound and arrested. Every spiritual robber, every robber, physical robber, spiritual robber, financial robber, robber of health, robber of joy, robber of peace, robber of well-being, robber of dignity. Lord, in the name of Jesus, may they be arrested right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, whatever is trying to rob us, oh God, may they be arrested right now. Arrest them, oh God. Arrest them, oh God. Lekete legado sobre de le bakura basanda. Rimbrado sobre de le bosia. Jamale hende le balugado sobre de le bababa. Regado sobre de le bakura bashaya. Remanuna ne mazuna ne makuna na masanda. In the name of Jesus, deliver us, oh God. In kaluba luhan de le basia. Arrest every robber. Arrest every thief. Arrest every power. Lima sekete le bayanda. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The Bible says about this tribe of Esau, Edom, it says in verse 3, The pride and arrogance of your heart have deceived you, you who live in the clefts and the lofty security of the rock, Selah, whose dwelling place is high, who say boastfully in your heart, who will bring me down to earth. In verse 6, it says, How Esau shall be ransacked by men who come to ravage with divine approval. How his hidden treasures shall be searched out. I want us to pray and say, Lord, even as we have repented of every pride and arrogance, Every power assigned to ransack our glory, assigned to ransack our glory, our wealth, our health, our honor, our dignity. Let that power be arrested this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, even as we have repented of all pride, all arrogance, all self-sufficiency, all this, I'm a self-made woman, I'm a self-made man. As we have repented of it, oh God, every time we refuse to depend on God, we are walking in pride. Every time we refuse to pray, we are walking in pride. When you say, I am trusting this and the other, you trusting the doctors more than you trust God, it is pride. Lord, we repent of it and we are asking this morning even as we have repented, oh God, even as we have repented, oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, deliver us from those that have been sent to ransack us, that have been sent to ravage with divine approval. We pray for deliverance this morning. Deliver us, oh God. Deliver us, our spouses, our children, our children, Children's children, deliver our parents, our grandparents, all our bloodlines that we are connected to by blood, by marriage, by covenant relationship. Deliver all of us, oh God, from the destroyers, from the ravagers. Deliver us from that power that ransacks, that ransacks. Can you picture this? When something is ransacking you, it means they go even into your cupboards, into the things you have hidden, into the secret jewelry, things that you have hidden in the 
safe. They go and bring it out and steal. Lord, every power that is ransacking our bloodlines, ransacking our families, stealing from us. We pray this morning, mercy of God, deliver us from that power. Deliver us. Whatever is ransacking our homes, ransacking our marriages, ransacking our children, ransacking our glory, the glory that you have given us, where the enemy is ransacking that glory, is stealing the last bits of it. We pray this morning, deliver us, O God, and restore deliver and restore restore the glory that had been ransacked restore the mercy that had been ransacked restore oh god the privilege the honor the dignity the health the finances that have been ransacked restore us oh god in the mighty name of jesus restore lord bring restoration in the mighty name of jesus show us your mercy oh god show us your mercy in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 23. Acts chapter 23 from verse 11. Acts 23 from verse 11. Bible says, On the following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Be brave, for as you have solemnly and faithfully witnessed about me at Jerusalem, so you must also testify at Rome. The Lord gives Paul a prophecy and says to him, Listen, be brave, be courageous, be of good cheer. Don't be discouraged, don't be depressed, don't be overwhelmed. I am telling you, that you will testify about me in Rome. You're not going to die here. This is not your last bus stop. You're not going to end here. This is not how your story is going to end. You are going somewhere. I am taking you to that place. This is the word of God to Paul. And then the Bible says, notice the semantics here. Notice the words that are being used. In verse 12, soon after the Lord has said this, it says, you know, the Lord stood by him during the night. And then now when day came, when morning came, the Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves under an oath, under a curse saying they would not eat or drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 men who formed this plot and swore this oath. They went to the chief priests and the elders and said, we have bound ourselves under a solemn oath not to taste anything, not even to taste anything, not to put anything in their mouths, neither food nor drink until we have killed Paul. So now, along with the council, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court, notify the commander to bring Paul down to you as if you were going to investigate his case more thoroughly. But we are ready to kill him before he comes near the place. God gave the prophecy and immediately these people bound themselves with the curse. They wanted to kill him. I want you to pray for yourself. God has spoken many good prophecies over your head. Many good things. He has even spoken concerning 2023. And because God has spoken, the enemy has risen up. When God says, I'm going to heal you, the enemy rises up and says, let's kill them quickly. When God says, I'm going to give you provision, the enemy says, rises up, let them be broke quickly. Every time you're seeing something that is not consistent with the word of God, just know that the enemy is trying to stop the prophecy. They are contending with the prophecy. You see yourself, you're not where you're supposed to be. Don't say, oh, oh, this is what I am. Oh, I am so unfortunate. No. The enemy has risen up against the prophecy. I want you to pray this morning and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand upon your promises and I stand upon the prophecies over my head. And I come against every plan of the devil to oppose the prophecy. Whatever, oh God, has been assigned to oppose the prophecy. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I come against it with the Holy Ghost fire. I come against it by the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Every evil conspiracy, every evil gathering, every evil power, anything contending with the prophecy. 
contending with your good mind towards me. I come against it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says we are not wrestling flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. I come against them in the name of Jesus. I come against the principalities. I come against the rulers of darkness. I come against spiritual wickedness in high places. I come against every demonic alliance, every witchcraft conspiracy. I come against the warlocks, the warlocks that are contending against me. I come against the familial spirits. I come against the spirits of the dead. I come against the ancestral spirits. I come against the territorial spirits. I come against every power that is contending with my prophecy. Every power that is stopping, that is trying to stop the word of God from coming to pass in my life. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Everything that is contending with the prophecy of my family, the prophecy of my husband, the prophecy of my children, the prophecy of my children's children. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Whatever is opposing the will of God for our lives, we come against you in the name of Jesus. God has spoken. Jesus has spoken. Holy Spirit has spoken. Who are thou? All demonic alliances to speak against the counsel of God. Every evil voice that is speaking against the prophecy. I silence you in the name of Jesus. Every evil voice, wherever they are speaking from the pit of hell, from the marine kingdom, from the witchcraft alliances, from the warlock union, from the illuminati, wherever they are speaking against the prophecy of God, against the counsel of God, I silence them this morning. I silence the evil voices. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we come against the evil words. We come against the evil contention. We come against the evil contention. Every contention over the prophecies on our heads. We silence that contention in the name of Jesus. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God uh, to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, every stronghold uh, erected to to wage war against my prophecy. I pull you down. Every evil stronghold that have been assigned to wage war against the prophecy. I pull you down. I pull you down. I shut you down in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold of wickedness that has been raised up to contend with the prophecy. I pull you down. You cannot prevail. You cannot prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Bible says these Jews formed a conspiracy and they bound themselves under a curse, saying they would not eat or drink until they had killed Paul. Brethren, we must not think that this is a very strange, unique occurrence. Even now, there are some people who have said over their dead body, Shall you get the testimony? This is not, a, this is not like a one-off thing that only happened to Paul. Even right now, somebody somewhere is saying, I would rather sacrifice my own child than see that woman being blessed. Somebody is saying, I would rather sacrifice my relative, kill my own blood, put them on an altar of wickedness than see that woman getting married. These are the things that are going on. You're going to pray this morning. Father, wherever there is a conspiracy against my life, my destiny, my joy, my peace, my promotion, where they've bound themselves with a curse, I decree and declare that curse has returned to their own heads. It shall come to pass. Whoever said over their dead body shall I make it. Lord, it shall come to pass. It will return on their own heads. Lord, in the name of Jesus, if their dead body must fall for the children of God to be blessed, so shall it be. 
Paul didn't kill these people, but we know that Paul lived to get to Rome. So these people died, not because Paul killed them. Their own curse killed them. Father, in the name of Jesus, every evil curse, every evil oath that has been uttered against me and my household, I decree and declare that the curse and the oath returns on the heads of the senders. In the mighty name of Jesus, everyone who has stood against me and my family and said over their dead body, Father, I return it to their own heads in the mighty name of Jesus because we will not die we will live and declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living we are not going to be stagnant we are moving to the next level we are moving higher we are going higher and higher whoever said we cannot move forward the curse returns on their own head whoever said it cannot be well with my sons and daughters father the curse returns on their heads I am moving higher I am moving forward in the name of Jesus every power of darkness that has entered into conspiracy against any child of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare their evil conspiracy returns on their own heads. In the name of Jesus, Bible said, whosoever shall dig a pit shall fall into that pit. Every pit they have dug for us, they are falling into their own pit. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the conspiracy return on the heads of the senders. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, wherever the kingdom of darkness is fasting against the church of God, where they have refused to eat or drink, and they are fasting against the church of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are pleading the blood of Jesus on the body of Christ. We are pleading the blood of Jesus on the church, and we decree and declare that the evil counsels of the kingdom of darkness cannot prevail over the church. For Jesus says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When the oath was being made, when the conspiracy was being formed, the Bible says in verse 16 of Acts 23, But the son of Paul's sister heard of their planned ambush, and he went to the barracks and told Paul. Then Paul, calling in one of the centurions, says, Take this young man to the commander, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and led him to the commander and said, Paul, the prisoner called for me and asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. The commander took him by the hand and stepping aside, began to ask him privately, what is it that you have to tell me? And the boy told the commander and the commander believed him. See, God gave Paul destiny helpers. The first one was his nephew who heard the, the, the conspiracy. And then he told the centurion and the centurion didn't play with it. He went and told, sorry, he went and took the young man to the commander. The commander was destiny helper number three. And then the commander didn't stop there. He wrote to the officials and the governor and he asked for help. He asked for a mounted guard for Paul, 200 soldiers to escort Paul so that he would not be killed. And 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen. These were all Paul's destiny helpers that helped him so that the conspiracy to kill him would fail dramatically. I want us to pray the same prayer this morning. Lord, wherever conspiracies are being made against me, I am asking that even in that place, give me a destiny helper. And Lord, Give me destiny helpers in all the places where help needs to come from. Paul got destiny helpers. There were over 500 destiny helpers he got here. Lord, we are asking for destiny helpers, including angelic armies, oh God, to escort us, oh God. Every place where conspiracies are being formed against us, Lord, give us destiny helpers right there, Lord. Just like Paul's nephew heard the conspiracy, Lord, let the people who are for us, let them hear the conspiracy and let them expose the secrets of the enemy. Let the secrets of the enemy be exposed. We know the occult performs in secrecy and darkness, but Father, let their secrets be exposed this morning. Let their secrets be exposed where 
wherever there are conspiracies against us in the realm of the spirit, uh, expose and destroy them, oh God, uh, and release unto us destiny help us. Uh, release unto us uh, the armies of heaven. Uh, release unto us. Uh, help us here on the earth. Uh, we receive destiny help us uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, help us, oh God. Uh, Father, we receive help, help in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for exposing every conspiracy. I thank you for exposing the secrets of the occult. I thank you, Father, for delivering your children from every evil conspiracy. As this year is rounding to an end and we enter 2023. Thank you, Lord, that no evil conspiracy will prosper against any of us, any of our children, any of our families, any of our bloodlines. Everywhere where Satan and his agents have gathered and said, let us destroy him. Let us destroy her. Thank you right now. Their plan has failed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. After this time, Paul was carried safely from that place. He went through a lot. He even survived a shipwreck. He even survived a snake bite. But God's word must come to pass. In Acts chapter 28 from verse 30. The Bible talks about Paul being in Rome and it says he dwelt two whole years in his own hired house. How can a prisoner live in his own house and received all that came to him, preaching the kingdom of God, teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. The prophecy came to pass for Paul and we know. That God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. I want you to thank God. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. It doesn't matter the serpents and the scorpions. You are treading on them. I want you to speak over your own head and say, Lord, I thank you that this head is covered with the glory of God. And this head is fulfilling divine destiny. This head is fulfilling every prophecy, every word that God has spoken over me in the name of Jesus. I am a fulfillment of prophecy. My life is a fulfillment of divine prophecy in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I, I speak over my children, over my family, over my household, over my husband and I declare our heads are carrying the glory of God. Our head will not reject the glory of God and the glory of God will not be tampered with on our heads. We become everything God ordained us to become. None of us will fall or fail in the mighty name of Jesus. The conspiracies of the wicked have fallen by the wayside. Every error of the enemy has failed in the mighty name of Jesus. Every satanic conspiracy has failed. Whatever my heavenly father has not permitted, it has failed in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I thank you for the, the, the glory and the grace that you have given to me. I thank you mighty father for your glory and your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, let's speak over our heads. Lord, I speak over the heads of all your children on this prayer line. According to Isaiah 59 verse 19, you say so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Thank you, Father, for all the men and the women and the children represented on this prayer line. That, Father God, your name is being feared in our lives. Your glory has risen like the rising of the sun. Lord, every way that the enemy had come against us like a flood, I thank you this morning that the Spirit of the Lord has lifted up a standard against the enemy. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We are overcomers through Christ Jesus. We are victorious through Christ Jesus. We are those those who are on top and still rising, going higher and higher every day. Our seed shall be mighty in the land. Our spouses are great in the land. All that concerns us, they are great. Our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our children, our children's children, our nieces, our nephews, everyone connected to us. We are the blessed of the Lord. No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. And every tongue that has risen up in judgment against us is condemned. This 
This is our heritage uh, as servants of the Lord. Uh, our righteousness is from God. Uh, we thank you, Lord of hosts, uh, commander of the angel armies, uh, that you are with us. Uh, and if God be for us, uh, who can be against us? Uh, thank you for victory this morning. Uh, thank you for your grace. Uh, thank you for your goodness. Uh, thank you for your favor. Be exalted, O oh God. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen.